if you created your blender scene but you don't know how to add the background in well i got a couple different ways here we'll we'll go through to, to fix that and several people asked me after the last video how did i create the the realistic world that the ships are flying over and we'll go over a couple different ways to achieve that look uh, one of the first things you can do is you can try to create your own right so uh, i want a world but um obviously not a square one because it's not minecraft We can up the subdivision so it's a little bit smoother. All right, yeah, let's go with six. Six looks good. Okay, the other thing we need to do is we need to add in a sunlight because this is important. All right, for the textures, okay, there's a couple different things you can do. You can go to solar system scope, okay, dot com, and you can download different textures for different planets. Okay, like. Mercury, Venus, all the way down to Earth with several different maps, right? Normal maps, specular map, everything else you need, which is cool. So it'll actually give you uh, reflections. Uh, the other way you can do this, you can follow someone like Blender Guru. Okay, he has a, a video on creating a realistic Earth, and he uses the things like the specular map. And what that'll do is that'll create actual real reflections from like sunlight off of lakes, rivers, and then the Normal map and everything gives you that the hyper detailed realistic looking mountain ranges and cloud cloud layers. Um, he also will do like the atmosphere. Um, I'll kind of briefly go into what that's entailed. Again, the solar uh, solar system textures, solar system scope rather. Uh, you can download these. They go from 2K all up to 8K. Uh, so we jump in here. Okay, we've got our sphere here now. So what we can do is we can create a new material for it. All right, we'll go to where we are. Save those series fictional. I'll go with that one. Right, drop the color in, and that doesn't look too bad. Okay, we can make sure that when we go into the uh, UV editing, that uh, it didn't show this before, but you do click U, do a sphere projection, All right? That'll actually stretch it out along the sphere more correct, and otherwise these uh, craters here would look really oblong and kind of out of place. So that works pretty good. All right, next thing we can do though is do shift D, scale it up just a little bit. Okay, make sure we click new material, which I forgot to do this last time. And we'll delete those. Shift A, I'll make a principal volume. Let that go into the volume. All right, so now we got, let's go down just a little bit. All right, density, we're gonna make it like a 0 0.1. All right, we don't want it to be too high. We can turn up the glow just a touch, okay. So now what we've done, we've kind of created that atmosphere, right? So if you get your image in the background or your object here, you know, have that little, little bit of glow and you can also change the you know, color of the, whatever you want the glowing to be for the atmosphere. And you could actually do a couple layers of these and then kind of just change the density, like increasing it slower or smaller and smaller as it goes out to kind of create that effective atmosphere that's falling off. All right, so what you do then is you drop that back in behind your scene here, and then you could have another uh, texture uh, from that same website. You could have, um, let's say like stars, okay? So mesh background, you could do uh, like a planet there. Where are my textures? Textures. All right, so we can do like 8K stars. All right, so the thing with this though, okay, what you want to notice or do is rather flip up the color into that and you can kind of increase, right? So now we've got a background that actually is still stars um, because the world property one is still at a strength of one, you still have a little bit of lighting underneath. So that kind of works if you just need a quick background. Um, you could also render out as a separate layer because if you do increase the strength of it, it will affect your model. So you can um, burn it out as its own layer and then kind of mesh them back together in compositing. Uh, that's not actually the way I prefer to do this. Okay. The, oops, the way I find it's the easiest is you go to render crate. Okay. Render production crate.com. Okay. They have 10 free HDRIs that are, you know, show the different planets and they even show you 
kind of how you would plug them in. And this is what I've been using for most of mine. All right, so if we jump back into where I've got here, okay, go to the world property, color, environment texture, and open it up here, and folder called HDRI. All right, let's do, let's do that one here. It's gonna take a minute for it to load. And once it does finally load, uh, we'll switch over to Eevee because that'll just make things a little bit easier to to move around here. Yep. And I have transparent turned on. Okay, so transparent turned on. All right, so now we have ship, all right, with our background just like we want. Um, now for this one, we'll say I want the planet to kind of be more on this angle up here. I also don't want it to affect the lighting here. Okay, so before I had all my lighting set, all right. So if I, let's go to here to world. Okay, so now I can change the background here. So if I just mute that, mute, there we go. We can see the lighting. Okay, now I, and I no longer have the lighting underneath, right? Because the world lighting strength, right? It's down to zero. Okay, but if I turn it back on, it's also going to affect the lighting on top, right? Because it's going to have its own sunlight. If you want to just use the, the lighting from the HDRI, that's fine, but it gives a rather kind of flat looking light on everything. Um, so if we turn off our sun here, right? And we can actually spin around because the light's coming now from a different direction and it's providing way too much light underneath for what I was looking for. Okay. So if we turn that back on, uh, let's switch over to Eevee. We'll give that one a second to switch over and then we'll adjust the way the the world is and then we'll go into adjust the lighting okay so for to adjust this click on your actual hdri material hit control t okay that'll give you the mapping coordinate from here you can move it up and you can angle it however you like all right let's do a little bit more i like that i think that's the way i like that's the look we're going for. Okay. Now you notice the lighting here is just way off. All right. That's not, not what we want at all. Go back into cycles. A little bit more accurate lighting. Okay. If you go into the world settings again, all right, go down, select on ray visibility. You can see where it says camera, diffuse, glossy, transmission, and volume scatter. Okay, what we want is we want it to be in the camera, right? We want to see it in the background, but we don't want the lighting to affect the rest of our model. So if we just turn the rest of those off, all we should now get is the actual you know, lighting that we did have. All right. And it's updated. Okay, perfect. So now we've got light that makes sense okay it's lighting up the surface of the planet right but we still don't have our light underneath reflecting back we do want some of that okay you actually see that's where the sunlight would be in the hdri all right so another thing we can do is i don't want i don't say this like direct light coming back i want it somewhat diffused or i want it to be kind of bounced so i'll actually create a plane okay uh, I will lower it down, move it to the side. Let's rotate that just a little bit. So now, if we look underneath, okay, we have quite a bit of lighting. We can okay, so now we got now we got the lighting we like. Okay, it's bouncing up off the surface a little bit, but it's not that bluish color glow that it was kind of giving, because uh, it's basically an emissive material casting light right so we got some light that we like but it's not overbearing so for this one kind of like how we turn the camera off or everything about the camera off for the hdri planet behind it for this one, we're going to do the exact opposite so you go into this little object setting or object one here select on visibility okay for ray visibility we'll turn only the camera off okay so now we still got the lighting from the plane bouncing back Right, and we've got our direct sunlight coming down like we want, and the background is still where it should be. Now, if you've got multiple objects and you're 
trying to have a big scene you know, a lot of things flying around or lasers are going and you want to have control over different things so like if i do ambient occlusion on this and i turn it down the background's going to get dim too all right so maybe i don't want that affected when i'm doing that in uh, the compositor so what i will do so i should go into uh, film okay and then turn on transparent but what that does unfortunately is it removes the background so to get that back in there okay when i go into your render passes I'll reselect environment, okay, because that'll do the background. Okay, let's just do a quick render of this, and we'll go from there. All right. Okay, the render's done. It's like what, 30 seconds. Uh, you can see we still do have the lighting, the bounce lighting off that plane underneath showing, which is good, so it's not completely black. Um, and we've got up here in our your node. Okay, so we want to add the environment in the background here. What you can do is shift a search do an alpha over there it is alpha over like this one in the bottom guy and environment Oops. environment add it to the top all right so now the picture is reconstructed just how we want and if say we do an exposure node okay and we increase the exposure to all that however we need to it doesn't affect the model at all. Same thing if we do say you want a more uh, glow off that fog. Oops. Okay, now we'll do bloom. That's too much. Let's do fog glow. Okay. And we wanted that glowing to be more. Okay, we can increase it there. We can turn it into low you really adjust that but again though that still doesn't affect our actual model itself all right so that's the uh three different ways i've got you can do is do a plane you can do the hgri or you can actually put an actual spherical object in there and, and create your own planet with stars there are several different ways that i've seen people do in different uh, star backgrounds and everything else but this is the way the HDRI is the one I found to be the uh, most user friendly again move around an EV that makes life a whole lot easier so I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this if you got any more questions on this uh, drop a comment below and I'll see what I can do to answer thanks guys